my guy, Gene Deal. We got a lot to get into, man. I guess we could start with Diddy being put on Suicide Watch. How you feel about that? Man, Suicide Watch, uh, you know, it's the number one cause of death statistically in the prison system. In order for him to get on Suicide Watch, he just can't say, I'm going to commit suicide. You know, that helps. But he has to go through a, he has to have a psych evaluation. He has to, the, the correction officer, they had to monitor him and see what he has, you know, we've been doing. Has he been crying all night? You know, those are some of the criterias. You know, saying that you're going to uh, cr- uh, commit suicide, crying all night, uh, doing some kind of self mutilation or trying to harm yourself because. Everybody think because you were on suicide watch, you're in a good situation. Once they put you in suicide watch, bro, you got to go to a cell, like a padded cell by yourself with very little or no clothes on. You understand what I'm saying? So that suicide watch, when I heard it, it it didn't, it didn't, um, I wasn't surprised. You know, somebody who lived in mansions, travel all over the world, somebody who had could go into any hotel, have any and everything at his beck and call. Now he's in a room that's a what was a 10 by 10 if that a cell. Bruh, if he was gonna commit suicide and he was on the outside during those city college days. Just imagine what he's going to do or try to do while he's in prison and he don't have his cell phone. He don't have no maids. You understand the correction officers who's making about 40, 50,000 or, you know, if you're starting, (laughs) you know, cussing them out, telling them all kinds of and the inmates, everybody talking crazy to him because what they what he done. He might think it's better off to commit suicide than to be in a situation like that, bro. It might be better off to commit suicide to him. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe that. I believe your life don't belong to you. Your life belongs to God and the people around you that you take care of and do what you need to do as a man. But him saying that them putting him on suicide watch, I could see that, man. But that that ain't a good situation for nobody. You see what happened to Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> he was on suicide watch, right? Who was watching him while he was committing suicide? <laughs> and that's crazy, man. So, uh, I don't have no feelings about it, man. You know, because I'm, 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 I'm the type of dude, yo, if somebody want to kill themselves, let them. I always been a po- I always been like yo if somebody want to commit suicide and I know people gonna get mad at me but saying I'm gonna let them do it I said it when the time when City College after all those kids had died you understand he was told that yo if we don't do something with these doors that somebody was gonna die and those kids run down the steps and they get trapped because Jessica uh, Rosenberg or Rosenblum locked the doors on them. And nine kids end up dead? Nine people end up dead? I don't believe he was going to take his life because of the kids ended up dead. He was going to take his life because he thought that he was going to lose everything with Andre Harrell up at Uptown Records. That's why he was going to take his life. And if you're that weak, then... I guess you don't need to be here. Yo, because Puff always had a problem of listening to people that he thought that was less than him. And now he got to listen to people that got power over him but never had as much as he had. He's going to have a big problem in the prison system. He's going to have a real big problem in the prison system, bro. 
and having to listen to those COs and having to listen to everybody that got more power than him now from a person that had all the power in the world that we thought now seem like the tables is turning. If these people have it this day way, he's going to be spending the rest of his life in the prison system. He better hope that they want to make a deal, but I don't think so. Or they want somebody else. He better hope. And he got something to offer them. Even if he got something to offer him, you got to realize, bro, like you got drug kingpins, you got drug dealers, you got people who make deals, there's murders and killers. They make a deal and they still get 25, 30 years in the feds. He's about 55 years old. If he do 15 years, that's 70 years. When he, he come out, he's 70 years old. He may not want to live like that. And then what he coming out to at 70 years old? He'll still have probably a little money to do something, but not to do nothing. So that's what he looking at, bro. What people don't understand is the federal guidelines is so different from the state. You need one person. I said this a thousand times for that sex trafficking thing. You need one person. That victim. And then you got the people who is going to testify that he paid to come across the state lines. Now, those are federal rules and regulations that you can't bring somebody across state lines, whether you, whether they willing or want to, but you paying them for prostitution. You paying them to have sex, you know what I'm saying, with your girl, your one of the friends, whether they willing or not. You can't do that. That's, that's a part of the law. They said he broke the law. So that part of the law will get you, I think, 15, 15 to 25 years in jail. They already have the victims, alleged victims. They already got the alleged workers on that one charge. So they should have been trying to make a deal long time ago. Yo, listen here, man, we do, we'll take this 15, and then maybe, you know, uh, in the feds, you got to do 85%. 85% of that, he could probably just do 12. You understand what I'm saying? Then go to a halfway house, and then he ain't never been in prison before, but he could probably do, go to halfway house, be released in probably seven or eight years, get on parole, so they should have been making deals and trying to work that stuff out, man, but it is what it is. But what kind of deal do you think he'll be offered? Because he got to have some kind of information, right, to get a deal, right? He got to tell on somebody. He'll take anything to give him less time, bro. You got to realize he, 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 he not going to get less than 15 unless he give up somebody. It, it, it got to be something they really, really want from him, bro. They have to have, they, he had to have somebody they really, really want. Because they're not going to blow this case like that. It's crazy because if you look at it, he has to either come to them with some information, him and his lawyers, and they have to agree to that. And he got to put something together real soon because they're not playing with him. He has to put something together real soon and say, yo, listen to me. I know this. I know that. It's way bigger than Diddy. He got to do a Nino Brown. This is way bigger than Diddy. And, and, and if you take this, I'll testify to you. I'll show you where they did it, how they did it. And I just want to be free. I, 
put me in a, 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 a camp or somewhere for a few years. Because the Fed's still going to want some time. It's very, it's very, it's very few times that even if you snitch, that you don't do no time with the feds. No matter what the circumstances is, they gonna want some time. 